Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspurn and today my moist mitts are going to be all over this bad boy here, the Infinix Zero 5G, a fresh new budget friendly smartphone that should be ideal for gamers. It packs the Dimensity 900 chipset, tons of dedicated gaming tools and a 6.8 inch Full HD display with 120Hz refresh support. You've got a 5000 milliamp battery, loads of great tech for that affordable price point. So let's whip the Infinix Zero 5G on out of the box, take you to full on of the hardware and the software and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers so first up what do you actually get in the box well first up naturally you've got the infinix zero 5g smartphone you got yourself a supremely beefy infinix charger one type c usb cable and you even get a free pair of earphones bundled in the box as well although they look like proper ear scrapers they do so probably best used as a spare and Infinix has even bundled in a condom case that'll protect your Zero 5G, really making the most of the uh, the fact that it's got that 5G support. And as usual, you've got what looks like a American dollar bill, except it's actually an invitation to join the Infinix X Club, which still sounds all kinds of dodgy. And that's everything that you get bundled in the box. So now let's check out the Infinix Zero 5G. So here we have the Infinix Zero 5G in its glory all set up and ready for action. And you know what, for a budget smartphone the design is actually pretty respectable. However, a slight warning before we begin, the Infinix Zero 5G is an absolute monster. It is a Godzilla sized smartphone with a 6.78 inch display, so if you're after a compact blower you're going to have to look elsewhere. Certainly not a good one for the old one handed use, though at least the bezels surrounding that display aren't exactly super chunky. So you don't have too much added girth or anything. Got a good heft to it though, so you'll certainly feel it when it's uh, lodged in your pocket. Now flip it around and the Infinix Zero 5G actually looks pretty slick to be completely fair. It kind of mimics the design of the Oppo Find X3 Pro. So for instance, as you can see there, the camera chassis isn't completely level with the rest of the back end of the smartphone, but it is a gentle undulation if you like. So you can see there you've got a smooth slope going up to the camera chassis rather than a full on camera bump. And you can grab yourself the Infinix Zero 5G in three different hues. You've got Skylight Orange and Horizon Blue, which are both bright and vibrant and poppy and would look fantastic on camera. Otherwise, you've got Cosmic Black, which of course is what I've got, which looks a bit more dull. But if you prefer something dark to something bright and life affirming, then job done. And apparently this arse end is constructed from a composite material that mimics the look and feel of glass. But to me, it just looks and feels like plastic, to be perfectly honest. And because it's a glossy finish here on the Infinix Zero 5G, that does mean that as soon as you start touching the damn thing, then instantly you've got fingery, smeary, greasy prints all over it. So if you're bothered about that, you'll definitely have to give it a good old buffing up occasionally to try and get the worst of it off. And yeah, that back end is probably going to scratch up fairly easily as well. So at least you've got that bundled condom case. You can slap that on if you want a bit of extra protection. And while there's no official IP rating for the Infinix Zero 5G, I did use it out in a bit of a rainstorm at the weekend. It was absolutely fine with that, not hassled at all. So let's have a bit of a squint at the software and it is Android 11 running on this thing, not the latest freshest Android 12 sadly. And it does look a bit different from your standard Android. That's because it's got the XOS version 10 launcher slathered on top. So everything looks and feels that little bit different. And while you've got Android staples like the apps tray on there, also other bits have completely changed. Like you don't have the Google Discover feed. Instead, you've got the XOS version, which is basically a whole bunch of widgets which can uh, help you to quick start a bit of exercise action, free up resources, check your uh, your calendar schedule, all that good stuff. You've also got a random motto thing which appears up top, which changes every time. And it's usually complete bollocks. You can definitely testify as someone who read a lot as a small child. I had no friends at all. The more we do, the more we can do. Don't even know what that means. Where there are flowers blooming, there is hope. Or just lots of good manure. And if you just keep on scrolling, you've got an endless supply of news headlines to further depress you. Although I've got to say, definitely intrigued by what the rest of this news story is. And then like a lot of launches these days, if you swipe uh, down the left hand side from the top, you've got fast access to your notifications. Whereas from the right, you've got a control center style setup. This doesn't have many little toggles in it by default, but you can add lots of extra ones if you like. So you can add on a do not disturb vibration style mode, ultra power, battery mode, you've got the likes of the gaming mode, I'm definitely going to add in the one handed mode as well. 
That one in particular, I think, is going to come in proper bloody handy. I'm going to actually reach anywhere near the top end of that desktop. In my color OS, the XOS settings menu feels a little bit clunky, a little bit busy, to be perfectly frank. There's lots of stuff going on here. It takes a little while to sort of learn your way around it. Pretty much everything you could possibly want is packed in here. So, for instance, dive into security and you've got fingerprint and face unlock. You've got an edge mounted power button, which has a built in fingerprint sensor here on the Infinix Zero 5G. And so far, touch wood, absolutely no issues with that whatsoever. It seems quick and responsive and accurate as well. Doesn't seem to struggle working out who I am, even if my fingers are a little bit moist. Otherwise, if you can't use that fingerprint sensor for whatever reason, you've also got face recognition built into the Infinix Zero 5G, which again is certainly swift, no hanging about. Although by the same token, probably not quite as secure as the likes of the Samsungs of this world. And plenty of other bonus features packed into the settings here, including a kids mode, of course. If you go into special function, you'll find a lot of extra bits in here. So for instance, you've got the likes of the smart panel, which can be dragged out from any screen and allow you to take a screenshot, a quick screen video. You can create dual accounts for your apps, like the game mode, which I'll definitely be showing off later. Of course, you do get a bit of crapware pre-installed here on the Infinix Zero 5G, as with all XOS phones, the likes of AHA Games, which I just want to say Alan Porridge style. AHA Games! Shiz like bees and boom play and lots of stuff that I don't even know what it is, frankly. Your Party definitely sounds like one for the kids. I'm far too old for this shit. But of course, unfortunately, a fair few of these apps you can't actually uninstall, you can only disable them, boo. And then of course, who only knows when the Infinix Zero 5G is going to get an Android 12 update. And as you can see there, it's already sort of lagging on the security updates as well, November the 5th, 2021. So if timely updates is your thing, the Infinix Zero 5G probably ain't going to cut it. Before we dive into media, the Infinix Zero 5G rocks 128 gigs of storage, UFS 3.1, so pretty nippy stuff. And if we prize out the SIM tray, you'll see it's actually a dual SIM tray, but you've also got space on the other side for a micro SD memory card to boost that storage even further. So now the screen, and what you got here, as I mentioned before, is a 6.78 inch panel. It's an IPS display like most budget panels. Certainly spacious enough to enjoy a movie on if that's your bag. Only a dinky wee pinhole a camera intrusion up near the top to uh, get in the way when you go full screen. Nothing too bad at all. It's a full HD plus resolution, so visuals are reasonably crisp despite the fact it is a whopper of a display. Certainly had no troubles reading tiny subtitles or anything like that, it's all good. Colours, not exactly super punchy or poppy or anything like that, so you know, animation looks alright, not fantastic. Viewing angles are okay for an IPS panel, you know, the image does start to darken once you tilt the display away from your face, so if you're going to be cramming in a couple of heads watching something together, then yeah, it's not great, but it's okay. And it's not the brightest panel around, but I didn't struggle too much when I was trying to see what was going on outdoors, even when it was sunny. But I do like how the Infinix Zero 5G's refresh rate is dynamic, so it can automatically swap between 60 and 120 hertz, depending on what you're up to. So it only bumps it up to that super smooth refresh rate uh, when it's required. And for your audio shenanigans, well, the Infinix Zero 5G spots a basic mono speaker setup. It's just a bottom fire and speaker here on this bottom edge here. Uh, but let's see if it's any good. Yeah, on your fresh new Huawei P50 Pro, you do get a bundled condom case in there as well. So you can wrap that around your expensive shiny new handset. And if I had to sum the audio experience there up in a single word, it would probably be meh. It's okay, it's not terrible. The top volume is respectable, I guess, so you can sort of hopefully be able to uh, to hear what's going on if you're just kicking back with a bit of YouTube in a fairly noisy area. Uh, but the audio quality itself leaves a lot to be desired, rather tinny and uh, indistinct. But the good news da, 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 is that you do have a headphone jack here on the Infinix Zero 5G, so you can get plugged in if you want to actually listen to audio that isn't crap. Otherwise, it's got the usual Bluetooth smarts on there as well. So now performance, and this is one area where the Infinix Zero 5G definitely has an advantage over a lot of the competition because it sports the 6 nanometer Dimensity 900 chipset. And that's actually backed by 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM as well, which is definitely impressive for a budgety sort of price point. As you can see, they're very respectable scores in the Geekbench. And everyday running has been pretty good. You know, apps just basically load up as soon as you tap on them. Uh, no issues there. You can multitask with the best of them. I have seen a couple of crashes. Uh, the system UI has just completely crashed on me a couple of times now as have a couple of apps, so it's not 100% stable, uh, but when it is not crashing, uh, definitely the Infinix Zero 5G seems to run like a, an absolute dream, ready for a budget phone. 
And if you are a gamer on a budget, then the Infinix Zero 5G is certainly worth considering because not only do you have strong performance, but you've also got dedicated gaming features built into this thing as well. So you've got this dedicated gaming space where you can fast load all of your favorite titles and the Dalek engine also offers up lots of different bonus features as well. So as you can see, they can give your uh, performance a bit of a boost when needed. You can reject incoming calls and any messages so you're not disturbed mid-game. And so I played a good bit of Call of Duty Mobile on the Infinix Zero 5G. Absolutely flawless performance, even when I boosted up the graphics to the very high settings. A smooth frame rate throughout, even when things got proper intense. The screen is nice and responsive as well, so no issues there whatsoever. So if you're into your fast-paced online multiplayer efforts like Call of Duty or PUBG, then definitely job done. But then I decided to really put the Infinix Zero 5G and the Dimensity 900 chipset to the test by running a bit of Genshin Impact, which is one of the most demanding Android titles out there. And I just left it on the, the default setting, sort of medium level, and I gotta say I was impressed. It's not a flawless performance by any means. The frame rate did occasionally judder and shake and drop quite badly when things got very intensive but not to a horrific degree. The game was perfectly playable throughout and I bashed my way through a good hour or so of Genshin Impact and the fun didn't heat up as well, which is partly due to the efficiency of the Dimensity chipset and also partly because you've got actual built-in heat pipe here on the Zero 5G as well, just to help keep those internals cool. And if you do do a lot of online gaming, good news is you've got Sub-6 5G support courtesy of that Dimensity chipset. You've also got Wi-Fi 6 support on this thing as well. So if you find yourself in a lot of packed areas like stadiums and things all of a sudden in 2022, well, job done. And you've got a 5,000 milliamp battery packed inside of the Infinix Zero 5G. And let me tell you, that'll keep you going all day long. Again, helped out by the efficiency of the actual chipset that's running the show here. I found that I could get hours and hours of screen on time with this thing. Thing, even if it was streaming video, streaming music in the background, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, it's definitely up there with the likes of the Red Bees and the Real Bees in terms of general energy efficiency and longevity. And when you do finally run that battery dry, well, it's 33 watt wired charging, which is getting fairly respectable for a budget smartphone, uh, no wireless charging, of course. And now let's finish up this unboxing of the Infinix Zero 5G with a squint at the camera tech. And what you got slapped on that back end there is a 48 megapixel primary sensor backed by a 13 megapixel portrait camera and a two megapixel depth sensor. So surprisingly no ultra wide angle option here on the Infinix Zero 5G, which you often find even on budget smartphones. But as you can see there, it is a very busy camera app, lots of different toggles and features and bonus modes to play around with. By default in the AI cam mode, it shoots 12 megapixel images, though you can boost that all the way up to the maximum 48 meg if you want. Got loads of different filters and all the usual guff that you can play around with as well. And the first thing I noticed about the Infinix Zero 5G is it does struggle when the lighting isn't absolutely spot on. In more ambient conditions like indoors and certainly in the evenings, you'll get really soft, fuzzy photos, especially when you're shooting a moving subject. And to be fair, even in strong daylight, sometimes a moving subject will come out a bit blurry. The focus kind of struggles to latch onto them at times. Don't expect natural color reproduction or anything either. So definitely quite a basic snapper, especially if you are trying to shoot shots of the fam or pets. You got the usual beauty modes, portrait modes. You do have a super night mode as well, which you can employ in low light if you've got a very still subject indeed. And this certainly will help to brighten up a scene if needed, although again, don't depend on you know accurate color reproduction or anything. For your video needs, well, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage at 30 frames per second, otherwise full HD at 30 or 60. And my little whole movie clips came out all right at that 4K level. Plenty of detail if you're shooting in stronger light. In the more ambient light, things do again look quite soft and occasionally a little bit out of focus. There's next to no image stabilization if you're moving and shooting at that 4K level, though, so you want to be fairly still. And also if you're shooting outdoors and there's even the slight bit of bluster, well, that will just completely ruin your audio. <laughs> And then last up, we're on the front end of the Infinix Zero 5G. You've got a 13 megapixel selfie shooter, which again is pretty basic. Again, at night times, you get quite blurry, fuzzy, unappealing shots, but in the daytime, it's all right. And look a little bit soft. Those skin tones aren't exactly super accurate, but it's okay. And using that front facing camera, you can even shoot 4K resolution videos of your lovely face talking with randoms waving in the background. Just ignore her.
And that last video was shot in the evening, quite low light for us. We've got a bit more light here, so hopefully slightly more detail going on. Not too much detail. Oh, those bags in the eyes look bad. So there you have it, my lovelies. That, in a nutshell, is the Infinix Zero 5G. And as I say, if you're on a tight budget and you're all about the performance, the battery life, you're a really serious power user, then it will definitely appease. Of course, yeah, not everyone will get on with XOS, but if you are a gamer, then you've got all those gaming features, the extra modes and stuff packed in there. So yeah, definitely worth a squint. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fan-bloody-tastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.